Hello and welcome to Get Yourself Optimized. I'm your host, Stefan Spencer, and today it's my pleasure to have Sam the Illusionist with us. Sam is a channel for the Galactic Federation and other extraterrestrial groups. He's been doing this for over a year and a half. Previously, he was a street mag magician and hypnotist. He's based in northern India near the Himalayas. Sam, it's so great to have you on the show. Thank you, uh, Stephen, for uh, inviting me uh, to your podcast and to your show. And yeah, it's uh, really an honor to be here today, just uh, spreading the message. Yeah, so the the message uh, that well messages that you get are otherworldly, literally. And I started watching your YouTube videos, and I felt that you were channeling truth, and that's why I reached out to you. You know, it's I'm I'm selective about who I have on the show, and I just I loved the messages that you were sharing, and so I wanted to uh, discuss some of these uh, on this uh, podcast. So if we could start maybe by uh, getting an understanding of how you see or receive information about timelines, right? So there's this. Uh, idea that most people adopt, which is time is this Im immutable linear thing. But yet what I'm discovering as I go deeper down the rabbit hole is that time is an illusion and that it is malleable and you can jump timelines. You can ask for assistance in uh, collapsing or compressing time or expanding time, or uh, having things line up for you so that you can be on time when you're running late. Like there's a lot of um, a lot more to time and to timelines than uh, people can can imagine. So I'd love to, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on that and what you've received about that. Uh, yeah, uh, Stephen, thank you for. Uh, asking the question about timelines, you know, basically what I understand is that uh, there are infinite, um, you know, universes and there are infinite versions of yourself uh, which are experiencing different realities. So it depends upon your energy and it depends upon your frequency and the types of, you know, choices which you make. Now, basically, if you think about the choices which you make in your life, they uh, basically boil down to what you are thinking and what you are feeling and, you know, the type of energy you have. Okay, so for example, you know, let's just say uh, the choice of waking up early, right? So if you are not feeling good, uh, if you are not emotionally, uh, you know, balanced, or if you're not, uh, you know, like relaxed, and if you don't feel uh, good, you will not be able to wake up in the morning early, right? So um, you, you could either, you know, wake up in the morning early, or you could not wake up in the morning early. So there are two possibilities which could happen. Um, based upon your thought forms, your emotions, and your energy, right? So uh, it's a simple example of how this thing works. So uh, as far as I know, basically is whenever we think about um, any image or any word, there is a certain vibration. And if you think about, um, even if you are just at this moment, you know, just uh, thinking about a friend which you, whom you admire, there is a certain different kind of energy. Now. Um, you are responding to an image in your mind. That's what I've known from my channeling sessions. And, uh, you know, all of it is dependent upon, you know, your energy and your vibration. Now, your vibration, it's very hard to define, but it changes uh, the moment you start making, you know, positive choices. You start, you know, thinking positively instead of thinking negatively. And, you know, your choices will also change. And depending upon your choices, you will also, you know, enter into different timelines. So basically, you know, all timelines are possible and it all depends upon what you choose to think, what you choose to feel and what you choose to, you know, embody the type of energy you want. So everything is possible and we are living in this, um, what they said was in one session, you know, we are living in a type of reality wherein we are only conscious of this timeline. So there are other timelines, you know, we don't, we don't have the, um, you know, consciousness, our consciousness is a single point consciousness. This is what they have said, which means that we are only capable of sensing or becoming aware of one um, thing in our experience. So for example, you know, you can be aware of your uh, right, you know, toe in your leg, right? Right toe in your leg. 
And you cannot, you know, at the same time, you know, be aware of your left toe. It's impossible. So basically, you know, what they've said is you can only be aware of one thing. And, uh, you know, based upon what you choose to be aware of, you could choose to be aware of a positive thing or you could choose to be aware of a negative thing or whatever you want to choose, you know, that's your choice. But we are basically a single point of consciousness in this timeline and we don't have the ability of, you know, becoming aware of all uh, other, you know, like there are, they said that there are multiple points of consciousness. There are entities who are able to not only, you know, become aware of this uh, one reality, but all other realities as well. And, um, you know, based on that, you know, I think there are you know, different timelines, but we just, are not, we, I mean, we don't have the capacity to do that. Um, it does, we don't have the required, you know, like, um, you, know, you know, technology or consciousness within ourselves, uh, which allows us to do that, you know, because we are uh, just learning uh, in this third density right now, and we are trying to enter into the fourth density. And I believe once we enter the fourth density, you know, as uh, I don't know if uh, many of your viewers are aware of, you know, in fourth density, we become something known as a social uh, memory complex, which is a group of uh, different consciousness. So I think at that point, we will have the ability to become conscious of different timelines. So for that, I think that is what I understand. So this idea of uh, becoming part of a complex, that's like the being part of the unified field, being part of a, a, a collective or the collective or having um a, an experience beyond us like we get these glimpses that we're all connected but for the most part we're living in this illusion of separation that someone else is doing something to us or for us but they're not us and yet we're all connected and so if uh we get to this new uh level of this fourth density or this uh, some um folks refer to it as the fifth dimension, uh, then we're able to be more connected and uh, have that, that veil of separation at least partially lifted. Um, is, that, is that an accurate uh, kind of summary of that? Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, like you said, uh, we are actually, uh, you know, like the one creator. I mean, if you just, you know, like take some time out in a day and if you just, you know, take some time out, med meditate, you know, close your eyes, and then, you know, you choose to, you know, separate yourself from, you know, whatever you know, uh, whatever you think you know in your life, you know, for example, you know, what you do or, you know, whatever kind of, you know, experiences you have. If you just, you know, like separate yourself from all of that, you know, what is remaining is just the pure awareness, right? That uh, sense of, you know, beingness or, you know, just existing, you know, there is no name to that. There is no... Um, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have a name, like, you know, it's Stephen's consciousness, it doesn't have a name like that, okay, it doesn't have a name like, you know, this is Sam's consciousness, it doesn't have any name. So basically, what I have learned, uh, like you said, is, you know, you said there is a unified field, which I believe that, you know, there is this uh, consciousness or unity consciousness, which we all came from. And, you know, when we are doing meditation, or when we are, you know, like, separated from our um, you know, egoic, you know, attachment style of our mind, because our mind, you know, attaches um, constantly to the things we own, you know, what we do, you know, how much money we have, you know, how much, um, you know, followers we have, you know, I mean, our society is, you know, geared, um, is run by that attachment style. And if we just, you know, separate from that, we'll realize that we are just the pure consciousness, just awareness, you know, we are just, you know, uh, inside this physical vehicle. And that's what I um, you know, like to refer to as, you know, many people, you know, they think that, you know, they are, uh, they are their body, right? Many people, they think, you know, they are this body in which they are. But actually, if you go deeper, you'll find that you, this is just like a costume you wear, um, mm -hmm. you know, for coming on earth. You know, this is the type of, you know, um, costume you have to wear. For example, you want to go to a party, you have to wear certain costumes. And for coming to earth to learn the lesson of, you know, love, this is um, what it is. So, of course, you know, I believe that, you know, many of us will uh, open up when they choose to, you know, go within, you know, rather than just to wait for something on the outside world. And um, they will discover that uh, we are all one. 
we are. So if, uh, if you're receiving uh, a channeling from Pleiadians or uh, Syrians or Arcturians, and for some of our listeners, they won't, or viewers, they won't know what that is. <laughs> they, they're, they're unfamiliar with it. I was unfamiliar with it uh, two years ago. And I, I'm curious to hear, how did you start getting these uh, messages from, uh, from those beings? And how, uh, like, yeah, what, what was that? Um, what, what's your origin story, essentially, of how you, you, you got to this place of receiving this information on a regular basis and sharing it with people uh, on YouTube? Oh, yeah, you know, uh, let me share with you um, briefly how it started. Um, you know, I, uh, to be frank, you know, I never thought once in my life, you know, if I look back at my memories, I never thought that I would be doing channeling because I did not know this thing existed, okay, prior to this thing happening to me. I was, uh, I used to be like a normal human being, you know, like uh, what's considered normal, okay, like people who believe um, what uh, other people are telling us, you know, people who believe in the government or believe in whatever, you know, believe in religion that uh, makes us worship something outside ourselves. And I used to be like that, you know, I was like totally, I did not, uh, you know, think that, you know, this would be possible in this lifetime. And basically how it happened was I used to do some magic and I was always interested in uh, hypnosis. So I was uh, learning street hypnosis, which actually is a great way to use the subconscious mind of the participant. So basically what I did was, you know, I used to hypnotize people. Uh, I used to put them into trances and I used to make them forget the name, forget the number, you know, and I, I used to, you know, make them do things, you know, like I was able to do that. And I still have some videos of doing that in my, um, you know, if you go back in time in my YouTube channel, you will find them there. So I was experimenting with hypnosis. And one day what happened was that, you know, I was listening to a self-hypnosis tape, which means to hypnotize yourself and to access the inner parts of your subconscious, right? Because um, I have noticed that, you know, we are only aware of certain things in our reality, but our subconscious mind is like so powerful. It knows everything. And it even has, you know, connections with, you know, the unified field, which you just said before, and it is connected with everyone and everything, right? It's like this enormous database. And, you know, one day what happened was that, you know, while I was sleeping in my bed, just listening to the tape, you know, it was like a radio connection, I believe. I did not realize that I was talking. Uh, it was like uh, sleep talking. Uh, people don't realize they're doing it. But my mother said that, you know, some weird kind of voices were coming out. It sounded different, okay? Like, if you listen to my channeling sessions, you know that they sound different. Because, you know, even I, when I'm listening, I'm like, who is speaking through me, right? This, this is something else. I, I feel that in, uh, even when I am watching my sessions. So definitely, you know, I think, you know, if you watch the sessions, you realize that it's not coming through me. It's something else. You know, this is not from Earth, okay? This is coming from some other source. Uh, it's definitely extraterrestrial as far as I know. And, you know, it started, um, that's how it started. And I had to go through a phase of, you know, going through the medical system. And the doctors, you know, over here, they did not know such thing existed. And, you know, they uh, said that I was suffering from psychosis, which is um, uh, in a simple language, you know, talking on your own, uh, which many people, you know, which people, they do, you know, um, loudly. If you talk loudly on your own self, that's known as psychosis. That's what they say. So, yeah, I mean, I did not, you know, uh, take any medication. Thankfully, I did some research. And the funny thing was, you know, this only happened while I was on a trance state. So I knew it, I was not sick, you know, basically this thing was being triggered when I was in trance. And, you know, that's how uh, this journey began. And uh, yeah, I, I found the messages to be really um, helpful and I started sharing it. I thought, you know, maybe uh, people will, you know, like the message and maybe, you know, they need it, you know, at this time, you know, because I've seen um, you know, this, I don't, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do this, you know, since the time I started my research and I've seen many people channel and it's normal, you know, it's, it's becoming more common nowadays. Yeah, very, very common. Uh, yeah. And uh, one of the most famous uh, channels who went into a trance and was not uh, really conscious even when he was uh, being taken over by 
these uh, these beings is Edgar Casey. Uh, Edgar Casey lived oh, yeah. hundred years ago, very famous, very respected, uh, very legit. And um, I had not heard of him until last year. I'd heard of Nost Nostradamus, of course. I think everybody has, but uh, he's right up there with the accuracy of his predictions. Uh, of course, he's on the other side of the veil now. He's he's no longer with us in physical form, but he was incredible. And uh, so, yeah, there, there's a whole kind of foundation or nonprofit that uh, maintains a library and, and different uh, uh, branch uh, locations where people can go in for, uh, into uh, get um, uh, classes and things like that. And I'm just curious, to, are, are you familiar with Edgar Casey? Yeah, actually, I had channeled about you know Edgar Casey's um, you know soul evolution in my channel previously. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I I definitely know that you know he was able to do the, almost the same thing, and um, you know bring forth information which really is fascinating. You know. Yeah, definitely. Now one. Uh, recent YouTube video of yours uh, was particularly fascinating to me. I'll include the the uh, video in the show notes for this episode. And that was one where you were talking about how what we believe, or this was actually you know information from uh, from above or from the uh, you know other side of the veil, I guess, or or from the ETs, was that um, what we think is happening now in real time is actually in the past and essentially an echo yeah. so the present moment is inside of us when we quiet the external world all of our five senses and then just go within then we're in the present moment but otherwise when we're like knocking on a table or scratching our our, our chin or something we're actually in in the past could you elaborate a bit yeah, more exactly. on that? Oh, yeah. You know, I think, you know, this is very, like, deep uh, because I think it depends on the person who is listening to um, and the experiences they have. Now, based on my understanding, you know, what I feel is that, um, you know, our um, you know, true self, which is found within ourself, uh, is only accessed when we are completely separate from, uh, I mean, uh, dissociated from the outside reality, which we perceive to be real, right? And what they've said is, you know, in, uh, in essence, we are the creators. They say that we created this world. So whatever you are, you know, like seeing in your reality, you have created it. And, you know, maybe knowingly or unknowingly, you know, you, uh, you know, implanted those seeds uh, in your mind, uh, which have then produced this reality. And I think, you know, what they are saying is that, you know, uh, this is a kind of echo of your own uh, inner self of you know what you are giving your own inner self for example you know if you feed on negativity on a daily basis then um you know it's not you know far away you know maybe tomorrow or maybe after some time you know maybe after six months you'll see an echo of that okay so it, it doesn't necessarily happen right now because what they said is this is a reflection of your past thinking or past thoughts or past emotions you know whatever you uh, entertain in your past i mean previously like six months ago whatever you entertained you know, this is being reflected right now. And what you're seeing as the present actually is not the present. That's what they said. The present can be found within yourself. So, you know, ask yourself, you know, every moment you are, you know, imagining or you are thinking about something, you know, what you are, um, you know, uh, doing in the present moment. So that's the real reality, which you will see not so, you know, far away. Maybe like, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, tomorrow, sometimes it takes 10 days, you know, and then you'll see a reflection of, um, you know, what you did inside, which is actually the present moment. So ask yourself, you know, what you're doing, what kind of thoughts you're thinking, you know, you have the choice to change your life and the present moment, you know, which you see um, is not this, uh, which you can sense, but it's actually within yourself. So you have to silence yourself, you know, silence your mind and then go within and create what you want. And you will see the reflection of that thing coming out. You know, that's what I have understood from that. Now it depends on, you know, people's experience. Now, someone uh, who has a different kind of experience may understand that line differently, but that's what I understand. Mm. So my my understanding of uh, like timelines and of the present moment and 
uh, just time being an illusion. Where I'm at right now is that uh, essentially everything is already written. You know, this is actually in the Quran. Uh, it's called uh, maktub. In, in uh, Arabic, it means it is written. The idea then of free will evolves from not just um, like if if you can if you, if you have a, a script written out for you and you're just playing that role you're you're essentially an actor in the play that was written for you is also written by you by the way by your higher self then where is free will like where are the it seems like we have infinite choices like am I going to sleep in this morning or am I going to get up early like I wanted to well uh, back to what we were talking about at the beginning of this episode all of those different choices uh, become different timelines so we have one timeline where we didn't get up early even though we did in this timeline there is another timeline where uh, we decided not to take the car to work and to walk to work and then uh, we avoided a, a car crash uh, because of that, or you know, getting hurt. You know, there are these all all these different timelines, and when you look, uh, kind of zoom out from all of this, you see that it was already predetermined, and the free will really only exists in the moments where you're in between. Otherwise, it's just kind of autopilot. So when you're in these moments of in between where you could make a different choice um, that is over and above your autopilot mode of what you normally do, uh, then you can get a timeline upgrade and then you get a whole new script and a whole new destiny, which is also written by you. So that's my understanding. And uh, granted, it's a limited understanding because I am I still feel like a toddler or a you know, kindergartner in, in all of this. But if we then associate that with what you were channeling about the past, uh, the real, uh, what we believe to be real time is actually a, a past uh, echo of the present moment, then um, it makes more sense when things happen like, all right, I stubbed my toe today and that was already written, <laughs> how it was supposed to happen. And then I reflected on that and I wondered why that happened and then i got a message about that that gave me something to reflect on to be extra careful today when i'm you know going through my daily routine and that included being in the car and i avoided a terrible car crash that almost happened but because i was extra vigilant from stubbing my toe it didn't happen it's a little mind-boggling to think of all this and then to kind of be just generally aware of your awareness throughout your day but it leads to a whole other level of uh of destiny i find so i'm i'm curious to and, and by the way some of this information i uh received from watching some videos of uh Dolores Cannon explaining this whole thing about we're uh essentially playing out a role in in a movie or a play and i'll include the the video in the show notes uh, from uh, Dolores Cannon, and then also reading the book *The Alchemist* by Paulo Coelho, and the whole one of the themes from that book was Maktoub. It is written. <laughs> it's a lot, but what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Oh yeah, you know definitely. I uh, you know what I know from my own experience is that you know many of us you know we think we are like you know really conscious, right? We think that we are conscious of ourselves, but actually in reality, we are not really conscious of our, you know, unconscious habits. You know, if you just ask yourself, you know, what you are, you know, thinking on a daily basis, it's very hard to become conscious of every single thought, right? It's very difficult to become, you know, conscious of, you know, how, what kind of uh, feelings you're feeling, what kind of emotions you're feeling, okay? But, you know, the moment you become completely conscious, Conscious, okay, when you become like, you know, so conscious that you only allow, you know, those thoughts which help you to come in. And, you know, when you only allow those emotions which, you know, uh, you want to experience in your reality to come in. And that, you know, I believe is um, an exercise of your free will. You only have free will in your inner 
inner domain or the inner self. So basically, you know, right now, you know, all the script is written, like you said, you know, like we are, we are going to have this interview. It's already written because, you know, we may have thought about this or, you know, our emotions or our vibration matched or however it happened. Mm. So this will play out. Okay. This will play out since we are in a uh, time delay, like they said. So what you can do is, you know, if you're not liking this, you know, you can just, um, you know, become conscious of what you're doing and then maybe, you know, reflect, you know, back a little bit, maybe just go back a few months or, you know, maybe 15 days ago. And what were you thinking? You know, were you thinking, were you entertaining? Were you looking at the news and, you know, reacting and, you know, becoming angry? You know, what were you doing? You know, that caused your toe to be stubbed, like you said. And, you know, just, uh, just in realize that, oh, oh uh, I did that, right? Or maybe, you know, like I do it nowadays, you know, what I do is, you know, every single uh, time, you know, I have some kind of, you know, uh, emotion or whatever I imagine, I write down in a, in a copy, so I put the date I write down and the emotion. So what I felt, I, I may have felt in happiness or joy or, you know, sometimes I may feel sadness. So I write it down. And then, you know, uh, if you just, um, you know, after some time, look at your, you know, experience, you will actually see that, you know, this caused this, right? You can actually predict, you know, it will happen. So, you know, that way um, you can actually make sure that you have free will by firstly becoming self-conscious and, in this um, third density reality, our main job is to become self-conscious, right? Um, uh, we have so many unconscious habits, like, um, you, you know, we are not really conscious of many of our unconscious habits, you know, basically, uh, you know, how we think, you know, how we feel and how we act, you know, most of them are um, taken by our subconscious mind and we, and they have become unconscious, right? In essence, we don't have any control. So the only way to take back control is to firstly become conscious of all of your you know, all of yourself, okay, basically becoming conscious of your inner self uh, to just, you know, just observe your inner self, you know, don't, um, you know, give your complete attention to uh, what is happening on the outside world, because this is a time delay reflection and echo. Um, that's what they have said. And, you know, just, you know, focus on your inner self. So ask yourself, you know, what you are, um, what's happening inside, okay? So that's what matters. And that's the present moment. And yeah, that's just, what I have understood. Are you channeling other beings besides uh, ETs? Like, are you, for example, uh, channeling archangels? Are you channeling uh, saints and and uh, souls who have have passed? Are you uh, essentially a a medium for for human souls uh, as well? Like, how how uh, broad is this uh, channeling ability that you have? Well, actually, you know, uh, channeling, it's pretty simple. And if you, um, you know, uh, I mean, I was, I didn't practice this, but, you know, it just happened. So I have gotten used to, you know, how to tune into a certain, you know, frequency or a vibration. It's very simple. You know, for example, uh, like I said before, if you were to think about your mother, right, you'll have an image in your mind. And, you know, based on your experience with your mother, you may have, you know, wonderful emotions or, you know, if the relationship is not so nice, you may not feel that good right so there is a certain vibration with that and then you compare it with you know let's say you have someone you don't really like right so now you just in your mind you know you can compare the vibration there is a vast difference okay between the vibration so in essence you know what channeling is is tuning into a certain vibration of the beings you want to channel it's like you know uh, becoming capable of you know reaching into their vibration so for example and it's like um a radio you know that's what i kind of, you know, resonate with, you know, by tuning into certain frequency of the signal, you are able to receive that signal, right? So the same thing applies. And, you know, we can, uh, I mean, I can uh, pretty much, you know, like tune into any, um, you know, any, um, any entity, you know, if I wanted to, but what I do is, you know, basically I uh, normally, you know, don't channel, you know, just anyone or anything because it's very uh, risky also as far as uh, I need to, um, you know, protect myself. And also I need to, you know, what I do is I need to make sure that, you know, I am only, you know, thinking positively, right? So that my vibration is always in the positive. So uh, basically, you know, you will not see me, you know, um, you know, becoming angry or, you know, becoming really sad because that would attract uh, the negative beings because they uh, feed on sadness and fear and anger. So, you know, this is also one of the things about, you know, channeling. If you are not aware, uh, you have to, you know, have like, you have to be very careful of your own energy and 
you know, of the emotions and of the, you know, thought forms which you are entertaining. So uh, you have to, if you want to do it safely, you just make sure that you only stay in the positive. Don't entertain any of those, you know, negative uh, emotions. Yeah. So negative thoughts, negative emotions are uh, immediately sent to the light. Now, that's, that's what I do. If I get anything uh, negative, like some random thought comes to me that's not a, 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 it's not helpful, it's not loving, I immediately send it to the infinite light, to Ein Sof, E-I-N-S-O-F, two words, and uh, that's Hebrew, and I learned that in my Kabbalah studies. And uh, that keeps my mind clean because what many folks don't realize is there there are no private thoughts. So if you're entertaining uh, lustful thoughts or uh, envious thoughts or uh, destructive thoughts, that's on display. <laughs> like the, that's not private. And uh, I mean, that shouldn't be the motivation for why you keep your thoughts clean. It should be to be a, a cleaner uh, channel and to receive uh, higher quality messages. I thought, uh, you know, at least uh, that is one of the big motivators for me. But it's, um, yeah, it's pretty fascinating to think about how we're like a, a radio uh, tuning in to various radio stations. And if our vibration is low, we're tuning into some really dark radio stations that are um, self-deprecating or uh, self-abusive um, and, and not loving. And then we have, we ruminate on these terrible thoughts or, you know, they just intrude our, like there's a, a whole you know, study around intrusive thoughts and that's, that's not a psychosis. It's a, uh, it, it's a wrong radio station you tuned into. So uh, I'm curious to hear how you might have uh, perhaps been infiltrated at various times or fooled into receiving information that wasn't of the light and how you are discerning that now to make sure that you're not putting any information out there that is not of the light inadvertently. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, so I also do what is known as, you know, what they've given is a simple step to uh, use love, light, uh, exposed water, so basically, you know, this is even proven by science. There is a Japanese scientist. I don't know his name. Dr. Emoto. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the name. Yeah, Emoto, yeah. So he has proven that, you know, um, if you take water and then you send positive thoughts, it becomes, you know, wonderful crystals. So, so basically what I have understood is, you know, we are also, um, you know, mostly made up of water, even though uh, we may look physical, right? We need, I think, 60% of our body is water. So... You know, what I do is basically I just take a cup of water and then, you know, the same process, you know, I just send positive thoughts, you know, loving thoughts, and then I drink it, I rub it uh, in my body. So uh, that way, you know, the vibration of the positivity is inside the water and then, you know, it helps to protect me. And, you know, that's the thing that I keep on my crown above my head uh, on my bed uh, before I channel. Um, you know, this was given to me as a safety precaution by the um, you know, beings in order to, you know, protect myself from any negative entities. And, you know, basically, you know, one of the things that I really, um, you know, like about the messages that I re have been receiving is, you know, they say, uh, if you don't resonate, you can leave it, right? So, you know, uh, because, you know, sometimes it depends on individual experience. Okay. Now, if I were to see the same kind of message two years before, I would immediately dismiss it. I would be like, you know, what's going on? Because I, it doesn't relate with my experience. I am not ready yet, right? Some people may not be ready for that, okay? So I think it's also personal experience. And, you know, there may be, I have noticed this, you know, there may be many moments wherein, you know, you may be feeling some emotion, okay? And if you watch the same content, okay, you will not resonate with it with that, okay? Because your emotion changed or your vibration changed. And then, you know, maybe the next day your vibration is a bit higher or, you know, whatever. And then you listen to that and you're like, wow, this stuff is really good. Right. So I think, you know, it depends on the individual perspective, you know, so uh, we cannot, you know, judge like, you know, if I, if it's good for me, so it's good for everyone. No, it's not like that. Uh, I think, you know, everyone has the choice to you know, discern what they want to listen or not. 
and I think you know that gives um, this um, you know thing a great opportunity for people you know who want to learn new things you know based on what they are resonating with. If they don't like it, you know they can leave it behind, right? So that's I think wonderful. Yeah, one thing I learned from a previous uh, guest, I think uh, it was K Karen Noy who uh, said this. She explained that one thing they can't lie about the entities that you're communicating with or that are communicating with you is if you ask them question are you of the light or is this of the light they can't lie uh, that's one of those kind of lie detector tests that uh, they uh, they can't fib so if i'm receiving information that i'm not feeling uh complete resonance over like um there was one uh, bit of information that I receive, so I, I get these psychic messages, and uh, I'll, I'll relay them if it's, it seems appropriate to do so. And uh, there's a, a friend of mine in one of the masterminds I'm in. Uh, he was talking about his significant other, and uh, questioning whether she is his soulmate. And he was starting to go like, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm thinking maybe not. And then I got the answer, no, she's not. But it felt bad in my heart when I said it, in my heart center. It felt uncomfortable and like, this is not, this doesn't jive with uh, the light and with, um, you know, the Hippocratic Oath, do no harm. It didn't feel right to me. And so I asked the follow-up question of whoever it was up there that told me this. Are you of the light? And I didn't hear anything. I'm like, oh, you guys, oh. You, got, you almost got me. And so I corrected that with him and I explained you know, exactly what happened that that information was not of the light. And they're trying to trick you into believing that uh, she's not your soulmate when she is. Oh. And not only did he get that important information, but he also got the important lesson that you got to discern, you've got to ask the question to ensure that you're receiving information that's of the light and, and not getting fooled. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, 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 nice technique. So, there's another technique that I learned that's kind of similar to what you're uh, describing with the water, but a little different. I learned this from one of my Kabbalah teachers, and that is you can put three glasses of water along your bed on each side. So let's say your head uh, is against the wall and then uh, there are three open sides. You'd put a glass of water on each of those three sides. And then you would um, connect with, uh, well, I guess you don't even need to do anything else. I mean, this is just to make sure you don't get um, bothered by negative entities at night because I was getting these weird dreams that were very uncomfortable and uh i was not wanting them <laughs> so that was and especially it seemed like tuesday nights uh were uh were the worst night so especially on tuesday nights i would put these three glasses of water out i didn't put any blessings on them i just filled the water uh, filled the glasses up with water and it worked i didn't get disturbing dreams Wow. Those nights that I did that, and also I had to dispose of the water outside of the house, and I couldn't throw it out the window or out the door. I had to be completely out of the house when I dumped the water out of those three glasses. Um, but that worked, and then it got to the point where I didn't need to do that anymore because I wasn't getting bothered. I, I haven't been bothered in a long time with disturbing dreams, uh, so that's a blessing. And also it's a, um, I think a reflection of the hard work I do in keeping my thoughts clean and keeping, uh, you know, the, the, the purity of thought word and deed throughout, uh, my day. And just that no inner knowing that I'm stronger than those negative forces. So, yeah, I don't know what, uh, <laughs> what do you think about that? Oh, yeah, you know, that's a nice method. And I think, you know, it may help a lot of people to try that if they are having those kind of dreams. And uh, yeah, you know, basically, I mean, uh, to keep our thoughts clean, you know, I think also it's very important, like, you know, what kind of content do you watch? 
uh, most people, you know, like they are not aware that, you know, uh, if they are watching a lot of news, you know, just by, you know, watching something negative, you know, it will stay in you, inside you, okay, your inner self. You, you can, uh, you can notice that, you know, something will change within you, like a negative, there will be a negative uh, kind of, you know, energy within you, and then your thoughts will become extremely negative if you just, you know, allow that energy to stay in inside, okay. So yeah. basically, you know, what I do is I don't. And, and by the way, that also goes for uh, violent, uh, dystopian movies and TV shows. Exactly, exactly. Anything you know, like those kind of thing, and even games, you know, um, yeah. you know those those things, you know, they are really dangerous. Okay, most people, um, they are giving away their power, you know, like pretty blindly. You know what I mean? They're just you know watching anything, and they they don't discern. You know, like and that's what I learned. You know, to to choose what you're watching, you know, to, um, you know, watch something, you know, happy or, you know, watch something, you know, productive, you know, watch something spiritual, you know, that's the type of thing, you know, that will help you instead of watching, you know, what, what, you know, they are doing in, you know, some place, you know, where they are doing something negative. If you watch that in the image of that will, you know, stay in inside of you. And then maybe at nighttime, you know, you may have some terrors, you know, based on the image that is, that you have consumed during the daytime. So, yeah, that's also, I think, you know, very important. So uh, what are the different kinds of entities that are out there? You know, of course, there's no separation. We're all connected to all of them. But uh, what are the different positive and negative entities? Uh, what, are, what are some examples? Oh, uh, yeah. You know, for example, I mean, if you just, you know, look at your own self, you know, um, I mean, the negativity is also coming from within your own self. Mm -hmm. um, within your own self, the you know, more you identify with negative, the more negative thoughts, forms you will have, the more negative emotions you will feel. It's coming from within you. It's not coming from something outside of you, right? In a similar manner, you know, like um, there is negative and positive within all of us. And it depends on what we choose to, um, you know, allow more into our life. So uh, we can choose to allow more of positivity. So let's say, you know, you allow, you know, less of negativity and then you become more positive. That way you will uh, become more positive you know people will notice a change within you you will vibrate in a higher higher vibration that's what they say and i think you know there are beings who have chosen the negative okay so it's all within us in a similar manner you know people can choose to you know think about the negative stuff you know obsess about the negative things you know talk bad about others you know become angry you know like you know all those kind of things you know and then it's their choice you know they have chosen to be more negative rather than more positive but it's coming from within so I feel that you know there are entities you know who have chosen the negative pathway because they also want to experience that side of their uh, reality. Okay, and you know the thing is you know uh, as far as I know from my channeling sessions, the Creator has allowed us the free will to choose whatever pathway we want to experience. So mm -hmm. you know you may you know, you may or decide you know you want to live a very positive life. Okay, so from today. You know, someone may make a change that, you know, they will not think negative. They'll try, at least by trying, you are changing yourself. And then the more you keep on trying, you know, the more better you become, the more positive you become. So you enter into a positive um, vibration or a positive polarization. That's what they have said. And there are beings, you know, uh, certain beings, many of you may be familiar with, you know, they are known as the Orions. Not all the Orions, but, you know, most of them, uh, as far as I know, you know, they are a group of beings who have, polarized into the negative they chose uh, the negative pathway of you know engaging with separation you know they want to um, you know activate your egoic mind they want to you know activate all those negative emotions like anger fear jealousy so what they're trying to do is basically you know they're trying to keep you limited and what i know is that you know the moment you begin to change your um, change your vibration change your thoughts you know choose more positive thoughts you will begin to see a change in your life uh, mm -hmm. The first change you will see is your friend circle will become, uh, I mean, if they are not at the same vibration, it will become very less because, you know, they cannot stand uh, to uh, you know, stand uh, near you because, you know, you are very happy or, you know, you you are vibrating at a different level. And then, you know, because their, their vibration, you know, it's not on that matching with yours, they will, you know, not come close to you. Okay, so that will happen. And then, you know, based upon your thought forms, you may get some opportunities, you know, um, you know, you may get a wonderful opportunity to meet someone new with a higher vibration, or you may get some other things. And, you know, if you're engaging in negative, you know, the same thing will may happen in the negative way, right? So I think, you know, there are beings 
uh, all over the universe, you know, it's the choice. Uh, the first uh, thing that the creator gave us is free will. So we uh, can decide what we want to experience. And there are beings out there, you know, they want to, you know, make more negativity spread in the universe in a similar manner. What we're doing is trying to spread positivity to more and more people. They're trying to do the same thing. Okay. So that's what I understood. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I, I could just keep talking to you all day here, but I know we got to wrap up. Um, how do we, uh, our listeners uh, and, and viewers, how, how do we support you? I know there's a Patreon, uh, there's a Patreon channel uh, or um, account that uh, we can support you by and get some exclusive content. I'm a Patreon supporter. And uh, if you want to share that and also your, your uh, YouTube channel and all that for uh, our, our listeners to uh, learn from you and, and, and grow with you. Oh, yeah, you know, basically uh, in Patreon, you know, what I do is, um, you know, I share, um, I channel and then I share the, you know, like, I mean, messages from different beings, right? Almost like I do it almost three times a week, um, you know, and um, what I do, what I try to do on my YouTube is, you know, basically I try to answer the questions from the people. So for YouTube, you know, what I have done is I create these polls and then people ask me questions and then I try to make a video or a session about that and then I share it on a YouTube, okay? And Patreon is uh, a bit different. What I do is, you know, I just allow the beings to come through because, you know, sometimes they may have a message which may be, um, you know, like really wonderful, but because I was asking a certain query, it may not come through. So, you know, I have a Patreon, you know, you can join uh, if you want to and you can, you know, listen to this more sessions, you know, just if you want to, and if you love, you know, listening to uh, spiritual content, you know, like I do, you know, I just love listening to, you know, spiritual uh, messages because that's really positive and you can do that. And um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the only thing, you know, like, um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. We'll put all these links uh, also in the show notes for this episode. So thank you so much, Sam. And thank you, listener, for um, your open-minded listening and uh, putting out your uh, your white light into the world. <laughs>